everyone! This video is for all the Mandalorian fans out there. We're going to be making a needle felted Baby Yoda known as Grogu. And all the materials that you need are listed in the description of this video if you click on the tab below. We're going to start with half sphere cabochons and some acrylic paint. The brand of paint doesn't really matter. I just used a black and a dark brown and then I actually mixed the black into the dark brown to make it really, really dark brown. And if you wanted, you could probably just paint them solid black. But I did go ahead and paint a black pupil and then just super dark brown around the edges. Next, I'm gonna take the core wool roving and I'm just gonna take a section and roll it and begin felting it with, this is my 40T needle felting needle and then my clover felting pen. I'm just gonna make this into a round shape and this is obviously really sped up, but you're just gonna keep going till you get a really nice uh, sphere that's really densely felted. And this is the same process. This is gonna be the start of his body. It's just a oblong shape. I'm going to start putting some green on but this is the olive green color and I decided after getting pretty far into this that I, I felt like that was too dark of a color and I actually reordered a lighter color. I'm going to go ahead and show you the process still but I would recommend using the lighter color of green which is Caparina and what I'm doing here is I twisted up a small bit of the wool and I'm felting it to become just really dense. It's gonna become one of the fingers. He has three fingers on each hand. And once I get that fairly dense, I'm just gonna pull back another bit of that loose wool that you see attached and twist it to become a second finger. And then I'll take some more and twist it to become the third finger. This is obviously really sped up, but it's just the same thing over and over. And this is the end result. I did go ahead and pull this one a little bit forward to be sort of his thumb and I'll do the same thing for a second hand. But next I'm going to take a little bit of a brown color that I actually this was loose in my drawer and I don't remember what color this is. I can tell you that it's a little darker than the taupe color that is going to be used on his coat but that you could, I don't see why you couldn't just use that taupe color or you could just select a color that you want if you want it to be a little bit darker brown um, from any of those uh, sellers that I have you know, recommended on the list there in the description. Any brown wool would work. I'm just gonna, I twisted the wool up a little bit just to kind of get it starting to felt as a small little piece and I'm just gonna tuck it in to become a little fingernail. I'm going all around the edges and uh, I want to let it sort of retain its shape. Um, right here I'm adding a little bit of grooves like creases in the finger but here I'm working on the nail again. I want to let the nail, I don't want to just flatten it into the um, finger. I'm just going to repeat that for the other two nails. So we just kind of felt along the edge of the nail so that it retains its three-dimensional shape and you can felt along the insides of the fingers to get little creases. I'm just continuing to add those details so you can kind of see how there's some creases on the insides of the fingers on the insides of his hand. And those are just from felting in a row just kind of keep going over and over and I did this for a second hand also so now he has two hands. I'm just going to do the same process for his feet. They're a slightly different shape, so the toes are a little bit um, more straight and flat than on his hand that I kind of made the, the, hand, the fingers kind of curl inward. Um, these are just going to be more flat, and then you'll see I kind of make a little crease that might be around the ball of his foot, and some little creases where the toes connect on the underside. So right there, that little puffy area, that is kind of like the ball of his foot. This doesn't have to have a ton of detail. You really aren't gonna see much of his feet. 
And this is again going to be little toenails, just kind of getting the felting process started by rolling it until I have something that's kind of at least not too fluffy and it's holding its shape. And I'm going to go around the edges just like I did on the fingers and get it attached on all the edges. Anytime that you're working with these tiny little pieces, be really careful. This video, it, it is sped up. And I actually am going pretty slow in real life so that I'm not stabbing myself a whole bunch. But this is the start of the toenail and I am gonna attach it more, but this kind of shows just how I want it to still have a three-dimensional look to it. And do the same thing with the other two toenails. And then I'll make a second foot that matches this one. Next I'm going to work on the shape of his head. It needs to be a little bit more oblong. So I'm adding some more wool, just using the core wool to make it a little bit longer. He has, um, well, he's an alien, so he sort of has an alien shaped head. If you can see, it's, it's more oblong. So I'm just working on getting that oblong shape. And here's a view from the top down. And that flatter end on the right hand side is where the eyes are gonna go. So I'm just marking out roughly where the eyes will be and kind of creating a flat space. What I want is about one eye space in between each eye. So that's, I just measured it out with a, a blank cabochon. And then I pressed the painted cabochons into the glued surface. I'm gonna start working on making the eyelids, which will also help hold those cabochons in place. And I'm just gonna take some wool and felt it flat using my clover felting pen and I'm going to fold that over so that I create a nice crisp edge. And I'm gonna do this a couple times so that the, the wool is a fairly thick piece of, of felt before I attach it to the eye. It can still be felted much more tightly though, which I'll do in place so that I get the shape that I want. I'm actually gonna cover his eyes with eyelids on the top and bottom so that um, there's not much of his eye showing and I just feel like it's better to start that way and then you can always felt them more widely open. So he'll look a little bit sleepy, I guess, to start with because the eyelids will be covering a lot of the eye. I'm just going to repeat that same process for the other eyelid, um, the other top eyelid, and then I'll also make two bottom eyelids. And I'm just finishing getting that last lower eyelid on and now I'm starting to felt along the edges of the eyelids to create a little bit more definition around the eyes, but they're still gonna be um, a little more sleepy looking than the final product will be. And I'm beginning to add in a little bit of the creases that are gonna be around the eyelids. And there, this is, this is actually all gonna have to be redone because I have to uh, recover the whole thing in the lighter green color. But um, just because I'm gonna do the same process over, I'm leaving this in here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. In the center of his forehead, he has sort of a heart-shaped um, area right up his, between his brows. So I put a little lump of wool right there just to get that started. Now I've twisted some wool to start the sort of eyebrows, which is just right above that crease that I made on the upper eyelids. So we're gonna wanna create a ridge that is where his eyebrows are, and then little um, eyelids along the bottom.
I'm going to continue building up his face. Um, I will add some photos of the final Grogu so that I can point out to you the specific facial features and proportions that you want to be looking for. Again, I'm going to redo this whole face because I have to go over it again in a lighter color. So hopefully you're working in the lighter color already. But what I'm working on right now is building up his cheeks. He has little pudgy cheeks that when you look at him sort of from the like a three-quarter angle, not quite a profile, full side view, but three-quarter angle, you can see his little cheeks puff out. And if you were looking at him top down, his cheeks also stick out further than his little eyeballs. Right now I'm working on his upper lip. He sort of has a, I guess maybe it's a pouty looking upper lip. It, it sticks out. He's got an overbite maybe, <laughs> but his, his upper lip does stick out. And, um, when you look at him from the side, you're going to be trying to have the edge of his upper lip and the tip of his nose be about the same distance out from the face. You'll tuck in the upper lip right under the nose, so it'll kind of create a little V. And again, like I said, I'm going to I'm going to point this out really specifically in some photographs so that you can compare and go back to that. I'm just working on the little ridge of the nose. His nose basically is, the bottom of his nose is basically at the same height um, as at the bottom of his eyes. So you kind of want the nose in line with the eyes. And it's just, it takes up about one third of that space in between the eyes. So the space between the eyes is about one eye width and then the nose takes up about a third of that and it's at about the same height as the the bottom of the eyes, the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the eyes match up. I'm just working on again defining his little cheeks. We'll have to keep working on that lower eyelid. You know it kind of gets lost in the cheeks and then I have to add more definition. But you can actually see right there his little cheek how it sticks out beneath his eye. And both of the cheeks should be like that. Just gonna try and make sure that you feel really confident about the proportions. So what we're looking at here is the silhouette of his face and the important uh, creases. And then again here what the silhouette is like and then the shapes that we're going for that give that definition. And the same thing here, just from a slightly different angle. And right here, we're looking at the mouth. So that's the shape from underneath. When you look at him straight on, the mouth is gonna look a little bit more flat, but if you tip him up, you'll see that little U shape. Okay, now I'm going to start covering him with the new lighter colored green. And I'm basically gonna cover up most of that definition that I had worked on and in fact I end up basically taking out the entire nose just making it flat between the eyes because that area between the eyes is really flat um, with the exception of just his little button nose so right now I'm just working on tucking in some of that lighter color green around the eye I'm trying to show that this part right here needs to be really flat so um, I'm just trying to recreate a lot of that detail that I that I just lost. I'm trying to get it all back in there so you're kind of getting to see all of this for a second time. Now on this eyelid, the eyelid is narrower near the outside of the eye and as you come inward it actually widens. So you'll see that you know whatever that distance is right here it's actually more as you as you come inward toward the center of the face. You'll see that I have to keep adding more of the light colored wool. It's not because I really want him to have um, thicker eyelids. It's just to cover that darker green color. I have to keep adding more. 
again you wouldn't have to be if you started with the light color green you wouldn't have to be doing this but this is just I'm including this so that you can kind of get a second a second time at looking at how to do all these little facial details and right there I just twisted up a little bit of wool made a little twist line of wool to become the lower eyelid I'm adding more wool to thicken that brow the little eyebrow shape just really working on that uh, eyebrow shape right there I'm building up some of the head behind the eyebrow because it should be a little bit uh, if you look at him straight on the top of his head should be higher than the eyebrow so that uh, you still see some of the head above the eyebrows right now I have taken out the nose and he sort of looks like a different Star Wars creature <laughs> um, I'm putting it back in so it's just a little ball of wool just a little round ball that I sort of rolled and you know he's he's coming along getting back to where we were I'm working on right under his nose right there to make it really go inward again you can refer back to those still shot images of the final um, Grogu and see how it should look so right here I'm a little bit um, too far down actually the distance between his nose and mouth should not be as large as it is right now so if yours wasn't looking like that, it looked more right before and when I had it in the dark green and it takes me a little while to get this one back to the correct shape. So don't worry about that. But again, just refer to the final, the final look. So I added a little more there and I'm trying to kind of get it moving up. But he has basically an upside down U shape that goes from the corners of the eyes. If you lined it up like that, that's where the U ends and then you turn it up just slightly, just past, um, so it, the, the end of the U-shape pointing down is right at the corner of the eyes, and then you just turn it up just a little bit. And this is less visible if you were looking at him straight on, it sort of gets a little flatter looking, just a little bit, whereas when he's tipped upward, you see that shape more dramatically like that. You can see it's really curved. The most important thing really is that he has that little lip that sort of sticks out. So here I'm working on the little heart shaped part of his brow. And then on the outside of that heart shape, there are a couple little, um, like two more little ridges that are up at the tops of the inner parts of his little eyebrows. He just has little angles that angle in like that heart shape. Just working more on that, getting that definition and definition around the eyes. You can kind of see he's got puffy little cheeks. He's got brows that protrude outward from the side. This part right here dips in close to the same. If you looked at him perfectly sideways, it's not much further out than his eyeballs. And then the nose and that lip stick out further. And I'm just trying to <laughs> fill in more. And here I'm working on a little more definition around the eyes and the little forehead, all his little wrinkles. Now I know that um, in the show, okay, so here what I'm doing, I'm just recovering all these hands. But I'll mention that in the show, he does have more wrinkles than what I have created but um, I feel like as a sculpture if you if you put in too many of the wrinkles it sort of loses the cuteness so I tried to just include the ones that were critical to his expression and, and his overall look so right now I have a piece of wire that is about six or seven inches long it's a 22 gauge floral wire and I'm attaching it to the top of that basically starting piece of his body and I'm just going to wrap some of the wire so that it's kind of got a basic foundation of an arm this is going to be covered by his coat which is permanent so I'm not too worried about um, the look of those little arms I kind of bent them down now I just wanted the wire so that he'd be poseable I am using a 36 gauge needle right here 
because anytime I have wire that thick, you really are at risk of breaking needles. It's very easy to do. Now what I'm using, I shouldn't be using this one, but um, that one breaks a lot more easily. I'm being really careful. I'm trying to get the little hands attached. So I'm, I'm actually going really, really slow. This is sped up, but I'm tucking some of that core wool into the hands and I will re-secure it more later, but I'm really securing this so that these hands aren't at risk of falling off of these wires. And I'm just gonna keep pushing that core wool into the actual hands. And then um, a little bit later, I'll go in from the hands and push that wool into the, into the arm. So this is just gonna keep going and keep going until it's really secure. And it takes a while. Most of this does take a while. It's not a super fast process. So once I feel like I have those on there pretty good, then we'll just continue, continue on. Make sure that wire's in there really good. And you don't want it to slip around too much. Sometimes I twist a chenille stem pipe cleaner thing around that floral wire, just kind of to give it texture so that the wool actually clings to it better. I just didn't for some reason um, with this guy, but that would be something you definitely could do just to give it extra grip. And I'm just testing out like how this is gonna be. So I'm gonna start attaching his head. And again, I'm gonna use the 36T needle. I'm going to, this is the actual speed. I'm pushing it very, as far in there as I can, because I want the fibers to be very deep into the the head I don't want it to be loosely connected and I actually spend a lot of time doing this um, really pushing those fibers way into the head I have this sped up just because this, um, this is kind of boring to watch so it's really sped up but I'm really pushing those fibers way into the head I want it to be super super secure here I'm going back to the hands trying to make sure they're very attached and this video is actually sped up. This is not the actual speed. I was going much slower than this because as you can see, the needle will come straight out. But that also kind of shows how far in those fibers are going into the arm. So again, just really making sure that those hands are firmly attached. And then more, this is more of um, just felting the wool around the arms. Here I'm actually briefly working on his head again. I kind of made some of that crease that goes down the top of his head, which I will show you in another picture, uh, another still shot when we are working on his ears. There is a crease that goes right down the center of his head. So now I'm tying a knot in the wool. I'm trying to make it super dense so that the bottom of him is heavy. I want him to be able to stand. And at one point I was thinking I might make legs. I know he has legs, but I decided I'd rather not risk him being um, more likely to tip over. So we're gonna sacrifice stability, or sacrifice his legs, I guess, in the name of stability. So I'm basically gonna create the shape of his little coat thing that he wears. I'm just gonna make his body be that shape. He'll still put his little feet on on the bottom, but I'm just gonna wrap, you see that I wrapped some core wool, and I'm just gonna keep wrapping him and and working on creating a flat base and a wider um, base there where it would look kind of the shape of how he looks when he waddles around in his, his big coat. This is pre-felt, so it's not fully felted. I wouldn't recommend just going and getting a piece of felt from a craft store. This is softer and it is not yet all the way felted, so it really works well attaching it to the wool. I'm saying this as though I've done this a whole bunch. I'm, this is based on what I've read. I've actually never used pre-felt, I don't think. Um, I have used felt to give like some structure inside of the ears of animals, but I don't think I've ever actually used real pre-felt. And that's what this is for, is so that you can actually still create the shape and get it to attach really well. So I just attached his feet, and if you notice the way I attached them, I tried to really emphasize the parts of the feet that I want to have creases anyway. I'm just tucking that pre-felt pre around 
so that his underneath is kind of covered. I'm adding a little bit more of the green because I stabbed in the feet a lot right there and they got a little too flat. Just adding more to thicken up those feet, but I'm keeping the little shape of the ball of his foot. And here I am just having to cover, again, more of that dark green that's showing through. So I'm just covering the toes a little bit better. But again, as I attached these feet, I really used the creases of the toes where they attach to the, you know, the toes attach to the foot to hook him, hook his feet on. And I used also the flatter part of the foot. Just working on the pre-felt again, making sure it's tucked up so we don't see any of that core wool. I am testing out the length, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use the full length, which I think these are like 12 inch squares or something. I went ahead and used the full length and I just trimmed off that top part um, from that was hang left over from where I cut off the piece for the underneath. Kind of, I'm, I'm really just figuring this out as I go. So he does have a seam in the front of the coat, so I, I am wrapping it so that it closes in the front. I'm going to make a little uh, slit right here and I'm going to make it as small as possible so that it just sort of tucks under the arm. I will make sleeves for the coat, but for now I just really want the, um, the main part of the coat to cover as much of his, his body as possible. So again, I'm going to make a slit on this side and tuck it directly under that arm and then um, it'll be as smooth as I, as I can get a, of coverage of his body. This part took me a little while to figure out what I wanted to do. What I ended up doing was I do trim off that kind of that strip that's hanging and then I fold over the edge and I want to create almost a sewn look. So I'm felting just in a line along the folded part on both sides of it. So I'm gonna, I trim that a little, it was too much, too much hanging off there. So just kind of create this fold. I have a little foam thing that I'm putting in there so that I'm not like felting this tightly onto his feet area. I want it to still look natural, like it's not super attached right there. I'm just felting along those two edges and actually I kind of learned that I felt it really rough on some of that pre-felt with nothing behind it and it actually tears. You'll see that it, it comes loose on the left side, well, our, our left side here, you'll see it disconnects right there. Like, oh, it's not super great, but it turned out I actually had plenty of the pre-felt. So what I end up doing is folding it over so that it becomes more thick. I fold it over there on the bottom, which you'll see in a minute. So I'm just working on this area again, making sure that the pre-felt is all tucked underneath. I'm trying to allow um, the, the pre-felt to look fabric-y like it hangs. I don't want to make it super tight. I'm making it as loose as I can with the size of the pre-felt. It really only comes in that one size and I could have used it being a little longer. Um, if you really needed it to be longer, like if your little baby Yoda is a lot wider than mine. I think there is actually a seam in the back of his coat possibly. So you could just do two pieces that wrapped around and then you'd have a lot more length to your pre-felt that you could make use of. And I did purchase two pieces of pre-felt and I did need more than one piece. So uh, if he was a little bigger still I think two pieces should, should work fine. So I'm folding this over and I'm going to go ahead and still leave, use this little piece of foam uh, to finish the little sewing lines along his, his coat, finish that stitching. And then this is the part where I did tuck it under. I folded under that pre-felt and I went ahead and just fold it under that whole front edge. And I sort of tuck it just above his toes right here so that you don't see the the cut edge of the pre-felt. I kind of do that all the way around to sort of tuck it around just to make it more smooth. And there I just am felting it into that bottom layer. Again, that's not an area you're going to look at too much anyway. But
I'm going to cut a couple of, um, this one is actually just basically what's left over from that first square of pre-felt. And I'm, it's, it's a rectangle that I cut. It, it's, it's about three by five, three inches by five inches. And what's really important here is to not make it super tight against his little arm because he doesn't wear something that's really tight. So I am working really hard to try and make sure it hangs down. I'm only attaching it to his arm um, on that, well, of course, along the body. So, and I'm trying to make it drape down as far as the felt will drape, but I am attaching it all the way around at the body. But then the part on the sleeve on his arm, I'm only attaching on the top part of the arm where he has a seam in his coat and the rest of it, I'm letting it hang. So this is the second a piece of pre-felt cutting out about the same size and at this point I thought I should probably measure that so that if anyone asks so I did go ahead and measure it um, that's how I knew what the measurement was but um, we just want it to really hang we want it to look very fabricy and I have never made any clothes before with felted animals so if any of you already have experience with this you're probably thinking like wow she's really not doing she could have done this much better and I'm there I probably could have but this was my <laughs> my first try so um, I'm still learning with the whole pre-felt thing. Most of the stuff I make is just animals and they don't wear clothes. Um, anyway, if you can kind of just try and... I am rolling up the cuffs a little, not because... There, there's this wooly stuff that's at the edges so you're not really going to see it much but just because I want the length to be right. So I'm rolling them up and here I'm adding more green because I noticed you could see a little bit of his white arm <laughs> So I added a little more green just so that that wasn't visible. Just gonna keep making sure that the sleeves are nice and secure working on the edges of it a little bit more but again trying to make sure they have lots of uh, they're really loose along the arm part as much as possible just securing securing the top edge quite a bit I don't want there to be a lot of holes in the pre-felt you can drag your needle across the pre-felt or any of the wool you make actually to reduce the amount of visible holes you can just kind of scrape the needle along but I mostly tried to attach his coat where this fluffy stuff's gonna cover anyway and this fluffy stuff is a taupe colored wool bat and I'm just sort of testing out how to make it look kind of uh, fluffy like Sherpa type material so I'm kind of scrunching it as I go and then just pushing in in random places so that it looks a little bit lumpy, I guess. <laughs> kind of gives it that furry, fluffy look. And I'm trying to make sure that I have a nice clear separation under his chin and from the rest of the coat so that it looks like a little Sherpa piece. And here I decided to go ahead and speed up the process by lightly felting it into sort of a log shape and then I can work with that and just kind of keep scrunching it so we get little puffy, puffy bumps. Here I'm like, oh, still dark green showing through. Just adding more. It actually takes quite a bit of that um, taupe colored wool to create this little fluffy trim on his coat. So there's another little strip that I sort of quickly felt it into a smooth shape and then just kind of working on getting that texture put in there. So I'm going to work on the last piece, which I want to create a fold that sort of lines up with that seam that you see in the center of his coat. So right there I've, I folded it over and I'm going to make a little bit of a crisp edge so that even on that uh, Sherpa type part, there's a, a crease. Just continuing with scrunching up the wool and and kind of hitting random places, attaching it in little random places so that you get the little fluffy, fluffy look to it. 
And again, kind of keep pushing downward under his, under his chin and up from the coat itself so that it has a crisp edge so it doesn't look like the wool is connected to his head. Don't want it to, want it to look like it's just sitting next to him, even though it is connected. <laughs> like it's just sitting next to his chin. So I kind of keep adjusting that. All right, so again, I lightly go with the clover felting pin just to get it started in the right shape with that taupe wool. And then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did around the neck. I'm just gonna start attaching and then scrunch it up and then keep attaching the wool. And it looks pretty puffy at the start, but it's amazing how much uh, the wool shrinks up as you felt it and it becomes more dense and, and less full of air. So it shrinks up pretty nice. Then I'm just going to repeat the process for the other sleeve. So at this point, we'll just go ahead and take a look at what you should have so far. You can kind of see the details of his little coat and um, also his face, kind of see the shape there. And you can also refer back to any of those photos from before. We're going to start working on his ears. And I have a couple of pieces of pipe cleaner, the little chenille stems, and they're just slightly longer than the width of his face. And that's because his ears his ears themselves are just a little bit shorter than the width of his face and so I'm bending those chenille stems to have an attachment point for the ears onto the head and the purpose of the chenille stem is just so that you can pose his ears if you didn't want uh, him to have posable ears at all you wouldn't have to put a chenille stem in there you could just felt a flat piece of wool and do basically everything you see me doing here just don't have a chenille stem uh, inside of there so what I'm doing is I'm just sort of building up that area uh, along the top of the ear and rolling it. You see me roll it down a little bit to make sort of a, a thicker ridge part that's on the top of the ear. And I'm even going to thicken that up more in a little bit. I'm just going to roll some wool and attach it so that there's definition of the top of the ear. And I'm going to work along those edges so that it becomes uh, really pointed at the tips of his ears and I'm just checking to see if it's close to the width of his head um, so I'm scrunching it down a little bit more shortening it up a little bit plus I'm gonna fold it over some where I attach it on the head so it won't be quite as long as it looks right now and then I'm gonna use some of this which is a light color of a peach color that I'm just gonna lay across the inner part of the ear. And then I will take a second color that is a little bit darker. Um, it's the rouge color that I'll put on top. This was the beige, beige peach color. So this one right here is rouge. And all of these again are in the description, the video description, so you can see what they are. I'm just gonna put this along the very edge and along the very inner part of the ear so that you get a little gradation in color of the pink part of his ear. Just adding a little bit more right there. Um, next at the part of the ear that's next to the head. Tightening up this area, kind of checking again. It looks pretty good. So I'm testing if I were to roll over that edge, which I'm planning to do, would the ear be the right size? And it seems okay. So I folded another piece of green wool over the chenille stem. Just kind of use that clover felting pen, flatten it out. Don't use the felting pen um, on the part where the wire is because those, those needles do break pretty easily. So when I'm working around the wire, I'm using that black needle 
which is the 36T. So there's one of those little rolls of wool that I had mentioned. So I just kind of got a little roll of wool felted partially and then I'm attaching it to the top of the ear there so that I can really get a good uh, definition of the ear where it folds over at the top. I'm going to do the same thing on the other ear. So I'm just kind of felting and rolling and felting and rolling so that I get a little, little rod shape. I'm going to put that on the top of the other ear. I'm leaving the tips not felted not very felted so that I can have them taper into the rest of the sculpture. So in the case of the ear tip, I'm really going to felt it down in there. So it just becomes smooth and you don't see, um, you don't see like an edge. So it all looks like it is one piece. And then that other fluffy end, again, I'm going to leave fluffy because that's the part that I'm going to not only cover the, uh, the end of that chenille stem, but it's going to create the edge of the ear, like the front edge of the ear that you'll be able to see once I attach it. When you attach the ears, you're going to look for the halfway point of the head and then go back a little further. So it's not, they don't attach in exactly the center of the head. They're a little bit further back from the face than halfway, right where that arrow is at. And from the top down, you'll see that they sort of angle backwards. And there again on this top view, you can actually see that little uh, crease in the top of his head. So we're going to get these ears attached. I'm felting the wool around the chenille stem and I'm pulling down. Oh, well, I'm about to. I'm just kind of felting all along uh, with the wool that's already part of the ear, just attaching it. But I'm also going to pull down that, that piece you see right here that was part of that tube shape. And that is going to create not only something that covers that chenille stem well, but it creates that front crease of the ear. I'm just filling in a little bit of the back with some loose wool so that it smooths that seam really well. I'm going to do it along the top of the ear as well so that the attachment looks pretty seamless. There is a little wrinkle that he will have at the top of his ear where it attaches. And I'll work on that once I get the ears attached. But I want the ears to be also slightly below the top of his head. They're sort of, they're sort of centered. If you look at him from the front, they're centered as far as top to bottom of his head. They're in the center. They're, they're just slightly, they start slightly below the top of his head and they finish before the end of his chin. So what I'm making right now is something that will be the start of the little, the little crease that's at the top of his ear. So I'm just laying down a little strip of wool that I rolled and felted a little bit. I'm going to put some loose wool over that so that it just is held on well and looks smooth. But then as I felt along those edges, it'll having that little roll of wool will help define that crease that he has right there. And I'll, of course, do the same thing on the other ear. Right in here, you can just kind of see how I'm smoothing that out, that attachment point. You can kind of, um, when the angle's right, you can kind of see into his ear, like as if there was an opening to his head right there. So the ear's movable, poseable. Just kind of smoothing it out. I'm being really careful because there is wire inside there. So it's, it's hard to tell how careful I'm being because it's sped up so fast, but I was being really careful with that clover and felting pen. And attach the other ear. Again, just starting kind of uh, with the wool that's there and I'm adding some little bits of loose wool just like I did in the other ear. Here I'm realizing there was still dark green. Now I'm doing the same thing I did on the other side, adding that little wrinkle, making sure it's all nice and tight on the ear. I'm going to start working on some of the uh, finalization of his features. So I'm putting these images here again just as something to refer to, to compare what you're working on, 
with the final product and the shape that you're looking for. Again, I do recommend if you can take a picture of what you're working on and then compare it to photos, it's a lot easier than just looking at the actual item you're working on and comparing it. So I'm just continuing to work on his facial features. I'm trying to make sure his little lip, his top lip protrudes enough and make sure that the distance um, of his mouth is correct and that it's defined enough so that it really shows up in the pictures. I'm just going to be doing a lot of sort of fine tuning. Um, there's sort of a crease right there. I don't know if you can see, but from where his lip sticks out right here in the center, then it, it goes lower right here, like almost along, I guess, where you could imagine a, the tear, a tear could flow from his eye, like right along here, it needs to be kind of a, a crevice, like it, it deepens right around there. And then it, it comes out to a, um, a ridge right under his nose, and then it goes back down again. So you wanna make sure you have that little crease from the corner of his, the inner corner of his eye down to basically the outer corner of his mouth. I'm just filling in a little bit on the chin that I felt like maybe too much dark green was showing and just wanted to have a smoother look. So I work on this kind of quite a bit. And you can kind of see like his cheeks, I'm, I'm trying to make sure they're, they're full enough, that they stick out far enough and they're smooth and well filled in, making sure all his little eyelid lines are defined. Just things to look at as you finish up your I'm again just adding a little bit more of the light green because I had dark green showing through. But while I'm working on his eyes, I just want to mention that they are kind of, um, I guess, almond shaped. They come to a, a point in the inner corner and in the outer corner. And I'd say that the, the curvature of the top of the eye might be a little bit higher than the curvature going downward in the lower, toward the lower eyelid. Um, but there, there is a curvature that just sort of slants upward from the corner of the eye and then comes back to a point. So I'm just again working on his little eyelids and the little creases. And again, if any of this is, um, if you can't, if you don't feel like you can really see the details that I'm doing there, just please do refer back to those, the images where I have the lines sort of marked out so you can see where where you're trying to make the lines. But you can see um, like the eyelid, so I'm making that little, he has a little bit of a crow's foot at the corner of his eye. 
I'm just making one and then um, I'm just kind of shaping a little more so right here on the back that that crease down the top of his head is wider in the back than it is on the front just making a little more definition in the the eyebrow and all these little creases Just going to show you a little bit more up close the features that we're trying to make sure show up on him. So there's his profile, and you can kind of see his puffy cheeks and his his eyebrows that are sticking up. You can kind of see how the back of the head looks, the side again from the other side. You can kind of smooth these little holes just by scraping your needle along the surface and then I'm just kind of making sure everything's nice and secure there it's pretty much it I think he's pretty much done you can pose him not that he ever sticks his ears up that high but it's kind of funny so this is the final product of uh, the little baby grow goo and I'm gonna include some more photos so that you can see different angles in case there was an angle you feel like you weren't able to see well or you wanted to get a better look at how to do and I hope that this tutorial has been helpful and that you are able to make your own little baby grow goo thanks so much for watching